First Chronicles chapter 4. Just a wee overview of a man's life. First Chronicles chapter 4. Amen. And we'll begin to read from verse 9. It's the prayer of Jabez. And we want to look at it this morning. Just feel the need to look at it. Maybe you're needing this prayer to be yours today. Well, before you leave this place, you can pray it with me. Because we're going to pray it together. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. It's amazing. There's 500 names in the first four chapters of this book. And then there's 40 odd names, I think approximately 40 at the beginning of this chapter. And then there's a name called Jabez. It's amazing that a multitude of names, God picks out one name to tell you about his life. That's what got it together. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. The word Jabez means sorrow or pain. Imagine the call pain. Here's pain coming. Here's torture coming. Here's sorrow coming. Imagine your mom calling you that. She stigmatized him in the early parts of his life. And Jabez called on the God of Israel. Why? Because he was stigmatized. Because he was living with us. So he called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Some of us are afraid to pray that prayer because if God blesses you, then you feel as if you've asked the wrong thing. No, you're allowed to ask God to bless you. As long as it's not just for you, because he blesses you with others in mind. So would you take the blessing and give it to others and share it? And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. Isn't that amazing? So God granted him what he requested. This is a prayer that you can pray. It's not a charm. It's not a, you know, it's nothing like that. It's, it's a prayer that this man prayed. And I believe that we can take that and apply it to our own lives and ask God to answer our prayer. Father, will you bless my prayer just now? I'm asking you to bless every head bowed in this place. I'm asking you to take your word just now and let it come alive in this place. Let it come alive in our hearts, Lord, and we will walk out of here blessed indeed, knowing that you've heard and that you're answering the cry of our hearts. Lord, will you bless this church indeed? Would you make this church a blessing indeed? The other churches, the church across the road, the churches in Northern Ireland, the churches in the United Kingdom. Will you bless the church in Wales for Pastor Gondo? Will you bless the churches, Lord, that are represented here, even Bally Clare, Bally East, and wherever they are, Pastor Stephen, Lord. Bless the churches that they're pastoring, Lord. Bless them indeed in their congregations. And something supernatural will happen when they cry out to you. Oh, that we would have a Holy Spirit revival in these last days. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, Amen. and all the people of God shouted, Amen. Now, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. That's what the Bible says. He was more honorable. He stood out among others. Can I tell you something? If you're a child of God, you should stand out in your workplace. You should stand out in the college. You should stand out in the university. You should stand out wherever God places you. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. There was something about him 
God's blessing was on him already, but he stood out among others. Oh, brother and sister, may God allow you to stand out wherever you are. Wherever he places you, stand out for him. He was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. This mother must have went through a terrible amount of pain giving birth to, to Jabez. And she mentioned his name because of what she came through. He brought pain. Brother and sister, whether she, didn't, whether she realized it or not, she stigmatized her son for the rest of his days. She stigmatized her own son. His mom stigmatized her son. Sticks and stones may break my bones, somebody said, but words can never hurt me. Well, it was hurting him because he was living with it. He was living with the pain. Everywhere he went, oh, here he comes. Here's a troublemaker. Here's pain coming. Here's sorrow coming. How do you know? This man called him it. And that lived with him until he could take no more. Maybe you're sitting here with a name that other people have given you. Maybe you're sitting here today and you're stigmatized by what someone has called you as a boy or a girl. And it's lived with you, it's stuck, and it's stigmatized you. Let me tell you something, you can change it. You can ask God to step in. You can ask him to break the stigma, break the cycle of pain or sorrow, or whatever you're called, brother and sister. You don't have to be called a drug addict for the rest of your life, or a drunkard. He saved my dad, and he lived 16 years sober. He saved Jay Fallon, a drug addict, a drug baron, and he's now one of the leading lights in Teen Challenge, preaching the gospel and pointing other drug addicts to Jesus. <laughs> Break the stigma this morning that's ever called over your life because the devil wants you to keep you in it. But Jesus wants to set you free from it. And he or she whom the Son sets free shall be free indeed. Look at somebody beside you say, are you free yet? And Jabez called upon the God of Israel. He knew, who he, was, he knew who he was calling on, the God of Israel. Because the God of Israel answers. All other gods don't lie because they're false gods. There's one God, Jehovah God. Would you say amen to that? Amen. He, stig she was, he was stigmatized. So he called on the God of Israel saying, now listen, he prayed. He called on the God of Israel. He asked God to intervene. He asked God to intervene in his situation. He asked God to break that cycle of pain. He asked God to remove the stigma. He asked God to change everything in his life for good. Listen to what he says. He called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Notice the word indeed there. I don't know why you've seen it or not. But oh, that you would bless me. I don't want you to bless me, Lord. I want you to bless me indeed. Say indeed. The word indeed just add on that I believe, and I, I could be wrong, but the word add on, that word indeed added on there means beyond the shadow of a doubt. It wasn't a hoax, it wasn't a fake, it was real, it was God's intervention, and God blessed him. He wants everybody to know that God blessed him. Nobody else. God, and God blesses you. Everybody else will know. But it's God. He steps in and he blesses. Oh, that you would bless me beyond the shadow of a doubt that other people will know it's you and nothing else. It's not whipped up or worked up. Some churches you go to, that everybody's worked up and they're whipped up. And, all, and before you know it, it's a circus. You don't need that, brother and sister. When God blesses you, he blesses you. You don't have to work it up. He sends it down. 
It's not from earth to heaven, it's from heaven to earth. The blessing of God that rests upon you. They notice that you would bless me indeed. What's that? Well, I believe that today is divine favor. The favor of God on your life. I want to tell you, over my life, from day one, I've had trouble. I don't mean Linda and I, I just mean I've had trouble. <laughs> just got worse when I married that, doesn't know. I can look back in my life. I have gypsies saw lights over my head. I have witches who saw a, a, a man standing beside me. I have seen things in my life that only God can show. Now I believe that they weren't what they were seeing. I believe it was the angel of the Lord and the presence of Jesus. Even before I became a Christian. And I look back and God's hand. Though the Bible says, I have guarded thee, though thou hast not known me. In other words, even before we knew him, he was gay. He was protecting. He was helping. He was drawing. He was wooing. His hand was there. Brother and sister, can I say this to you? Divine favor. But I want to tell you something. Divine favor does not immune you from hassle or hardship or heartbreak. It's all part of the plan. Because you see, when that happens, it draws you closer or it drives you away. For my life, a part of it, 10 years of it, it drew me away, or it drove me away. But I realized the further I was going, the worse I was getting. And at 21 years of age, I decided instead of running away, I ran to. And he changed me. And that favor has been upon my life. By the way, that same favor's on you today. Amen. For his children born with precious blood. Divine favor. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. What about this one? And enlarge my territory. What does that mean? I believe that means divine increase. Divine increase or divine influence. I believe God will bless you wherever you are. And his influence and his increase in your life will spread. Just not stretching your borders. Yes, stretching your borders. What does it mean? It means to increase your influence for God on this earth. Wherever you are, Lord, increase my border. Yes, we're here at the end of the day. Thank God for this church. But I'm praying that this church will touch the world. I'm pausing your crazy. I'm not crazy. There's people, listen, in China and America and South America and Bolivia watching the sermons on, on the songs on YouTube. Divine influence. Divine increase. Do you believe that? Ask God to make you an influence for good under his lordship. Divine influence. Oh, that you would bless me indeed, divine favor. Oh, that you would enlarge my territory, divine increase. Oh, that God would bless. See, when God blesses you, automatically there's an increase. Automatically there's an increase. Sometimes afterwards there's also a subtraction because he begins to prune. Amen. He begins to subtract. He takes away the dead leaves and the dead branches. And you're left with just the core. But then the core produces more fruit again. And then there's more increase. Divine increase or divine influence. Oh, that God would bless me and enlarge my territory. Listen, that your hand would be with me. Stop me. Divine support. Divine support. Divine support. His hand with you. That's the right hand. Amen. The right hand. He stands in your right hand. The hand of God upon your life. Do you want that hand to, to help you? Do you want that hand to support you? I'm telling you folks, I have felt that hand on my shoulder. I can remember standing in the church at Falkirk, worshipping away. And David Morrison, I thought he was behind me. 
and I felt a hand on my shoulder. Now, you may think I'm nuts, but I felt a hand on my shoulder, and I opened my eyes. I thought it was David wanting to say something to him, and I turned around to say, what was he asking? And there was nobody there. No, there was, there was somebody there. There was somebody there. Oh, that your hand would be upon me, or be with me. Don't you need his hand with you? To guide you, to guard you, to help you, to strengthen you, to touch you, to heal you, to be everything to you. Do you need his hand today? Do you need his hand today? Well, ask him. Ask him to bless you indeed. Ask him to enlarge your territory. Ask him that your, his, his hand will be upon or be with you. When his hand's with you, the enemy can't get near you. When his hand is with you, everything you touch prospers. When his hand is with you, something happens and it's called supernatural blessing. His hand of blessing. Enlarge my territory that your hand would be with me. What about this one? That you would keep me from evil. I pray that every day of my life, Lord, protect me today. Protect me from the evil around me. Protect me from the evil one. Protect me from the plans of sin or the devil. Protect me. May the angel of the Lord encamp around about those who fear him and deliver them. Divine protection. Do you need divine protection today? Do you need that divine protection? That your hand will be with me. That you would keep me from evil. That's divine protection. And folks, I want to tell you something. I'm speaking personally in my own life. There are times when I could have been dead. But he kept me alive. I could have been dead. But he kept me alive. Remember in Nigeria, when we went to Nigeria, we went into the villages along the river and we went to this particular island and when we got there, the elders of the, the village, the village was about 70,000 people, but the elders of the village were having a drinking session and we came with the gospel and the medical mission and the elders heard that we were in one of the wee local, whatever it was, Kind of social work, whatever, community center, and they were not happy and they came around to us and they were gonna throw us off the island. And while we're standing there, these men were very nasty, violent. Nigeria, it can explode in a second. And we're standing praying within us. And the chief of the island, the chief who was there, his son took a convulsion front of us and he looked at me and he looked at the doctor, Dr. David Donovan as if to say can you help my son and we prayed for his son and Dr. David helped his son medically but I believe God helped him spiritually and the boy rose up rose up because the man thought he was going and if he had a died, we would have died with him. And God, he saved us from that situation. That's maybe just a simple thing, but it wasn't simple when you're standing in front of it. Divine protection that you would keep me from evil. Do you need to ask the Lord to keep you from evil? Are you getting sucked into evil? Are you going back to your old habits? Do you learn that the enemy to suck you back in in order to ruin your Christian testimony? And integrity, then you pray, Lord, that you would keep me from evil. What about this one? That I may not cause pain. Divine healing. That I may not cause pain. What's the opposite? Heal it. Bring healing wherever you go. A Christian should walk into your room and change it. A Christian should walk into your room and change the atmosphere and bring hope and bring healing and reconciliation. 
and salvation. I believe that with all of my heart. Simple things this morning, but just wanted to put them down just to give you an opportunity to look at them. Brother and sister, the Jabez prayer is for all of us. It's for all of us. Would you pray it this morning? Do you need to pray it this morning? Do you need the stigma, the cycle broken in your life? You get 10 steps forward and then 11 steps back. 10 steps forward, 11 back, and you just don't seem to get out of the bed. Ask him to step in. Ask him to step in. Ask him to bless you indeed. Jabez called on the God of Israel. He prayed, he asked God to intervene in a situation. God broke the cycle, he removed the stigma, and he blessed this man, and he changed his life forever. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Do you need divine favor this morning? Pray now. Enlarge my territory. Lord, I want to reach more people for you. Let this church's territory spread. Not just locally, globally. Do you want God to use you? Ask him to enlarge your territory. Maybe you're sitting there, you're looking for a church to pastor. Maybe you're looking for a church to lead. Maybe you're sitting here and you're saying, God, what's the next step? Enlarge my territory. Folks, listen. God will do it. I prayed this prayer in Scotland when I was pastoring 10 people. Left a 1,000 people to go to 10. And every day I said, Lord, will you bless me indeed? Will you bring in who you want the odd here? And over the years, one came here, one came there, and began to build up until there was hundreds there. To God be the glory. He can do it in your situation. He can do it for you. Oh, that you would bless me beyond the shadow of a doubt. That others will know that's not human. That's supernatural. That's God. God's with them. Isn't that right? When they looked at John and, 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 and Peter, they said they took knowledge of them being with Jesus because of their boldness. Fifty days before that, they were hiding in an upper room for fear of the Jews. Fifty days later, with the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon them, they're speaking and preaching the gospel to the people who crucified the Lord. And what did he do? He enlarged their territory. 3,000 people were saved that day, baptized publicly, and added to the 120. Brother and sister, can I tell you something? We have had our subtraction over the years, but our best days are yet to come. Do you believe it? If you believe it, give the Lord the glory. <laughs> Satan tries to destroy what God is birthing. That's what he did. He tried to destroy Jesus when he was a baby, when Moses when he was a baby. But he failed. And the king won. And he will in your life. Oh, that you would bless. Would you need divine favor? Ask him. You want his blessing? Ask him. Enlarge your target. Ask him to increase your, your influence, your, your scope of influence. Bring you over your boundaries to new boundaries, to new land, to new things. Also that you would keep me, that your hand would be with me to find support. I need you, Lord. I need you to lift me up today. <clears throat> Fear not, for I am with you. Be not despair, for I am your God. I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Divine support. Let him support you today. Whatever you're doing, let him support you. That you would keep me from evil. Divine protection. We all need that. We need it in our homes. We need it in our locale where we live. We need it in our business. We need it in our workplace. We need it in our church that you would keep me from evil, that you would not let me cause pain, divine healing. And listen to this, listen to the end. So God, so God granted him what he requested. Did you hear that? 
God granted him what he requested. If you commit your way to him, trust also him, he'll give you the desires of your heart. If you're running after him, if you're living right before him, he will give you the desires of your heart. God granted him what he requested. Oh, may God bless today the job is prayer in your life. That's my prayer.